I'm Joshua Hinlin here at the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry in Nathan Sawai's Art of the Brick exhibit. And behind me, we have his Hug Men display. And so these were created for a display at the Clement C. Moore Park in New York City. And what Nathan did, he was inspired by the uh, people that you see in cities around the world hugging sign poles and fence posts and table legs and, and even bicycle tires. Really anything that you can put your arms around, uh, people like to hug. And so this is kind of Nathan's street art. He leaves them behind in cities. He visits, inspire people and, and to leave his mark there. These were created using bricks that had been signed by people at previous Art of the Brick ex exhibits. And so you can see signatures on every single brick will have someone's name on it and they've all been signed. And Nathan continues to do additional installations at locations around the world, so he doesn't just do these indoor kind of museum exhibits. He also does this, this outdoor art, and these are really impressive. They're very eye-catching because he does the, the rainbow technique, kind of like he did with the, the peace sign earlier in the exhibit. And then you've got them kind of hugging the tree trunks as well. And I really like how he also incorporated the, the signed bricks into it. So I think that's a, a really cool technique here. And it's nice to see that he does these outdoor exhibits as well with the, with the indoor art. So I, I think this turned out, turned out really great and hopefully we'll be able to show you more outdoor art from him in the future. Thanks for watching. Here we are at the end of the exhibit and we're in the Brick Lab here and I'm with Jennifer. She is gonna take us around and show us the different areas of the Brick Lab. So if you wanna start kind of right where we are and then, and then show us around. So this right here is actually a fun photo opportunity. So once people have created in these two spaces that I'm gonna show you, they get to come here and take a fun picture. Uh, but the, we kind of have three basic spaces going on right here. Right behind us, we've got the Duplo area and Duplos are bigger bricks, right? And they are designed for our zero to six year old range, our, our early childhood education. So this area is really intentional for those little kids to be able to take it a little bit slower, play with bigger bricks and get their creativity going in this space. And then if we move this way, this way is the place that people get so excited about this is the Lego free play space. <laughs> so over here right now we only have about 25 to 30,000 bricks out but it is crazy. It gets so busy in here when there are visitors you literally cannot walk in this space. There are so many people creating on the tables, on the floor, um, making just really amazing creations out of Lego bricks. <laughs> it's amazing what kids are capable of when you just let them loose on, like you said, thousands and thousands, thousands of bricks. <laughs> thousands of bricks, yes. And you know what? People make the most amazing, mind-blowing things that I could never dream of. <laughs> yeah. And it looks like you've got some posters on the walls here. What are these for? We do have some posters on the walls. So these, this first one's really to orient people, right? Brick vocabulary. What is a brick versus a plate versus a tile? Um, what are studs, right? Because we refer to that a lot in the Lego community. We talk about two by four studded bricks, but a lot of people might not know that. So we give them a little bit of an introduction and then the rest of the, the posters are build tips. And so these are things that kind of as a staff, we collectively got together and thought about what are some interesting really simple ways that people can expand their their Lego techniques to really put their building on a new level. So can you build a, a two-sided brick, right, with studs on both sides? There's a couple different techniques to do that. There are some interesting ways to make curved things out of rectangular bricks, right? So these are just ideas while people are in here going crazy, right, playing, <laughs> um, maybe might help them build in a way that they never thought about building before. Sure, yeah, sounds good. So then through this area, what's over here? Yeah, so over here we've kind of got two things. You see in the background we've got all of these shelves where people get to put their creations. So if they created something, they want to leave it on the shelves for OMSI. That's where we keep it. Um, and then these three tables right here are our rotating activities. So 
We are a science museum, right? And we, we created this space to be hands-on, interactive, and engaging. We also wanted to put in some science education. Mm -hmm. So these tables will look different depending on which day you come in. Right now we have some physics-themed demonstrations that are out, and they're really just hands-on, open-ended, activities for people to get excited about right now, physics. So we're looking at kind of the physics of air and water pressure with Cartesian divers. We've got some pulley systems and some simple machines. So thinking about levers and inclined planes and how do you do that with Legos. Yeah, nice. And I imagine kids really enjoy this after going through the Art of the Brick exhibit and now they can mess with everything in this area. <laughs> yes, believe me, it is a it is a hard play when you are at the beginning of the exhibit and you have to say, please do not touch the Lego bricks. But we, we tell them, if you make it all the way to the end, this is where you get to play. So you've just gone through, you've seen all of those creative, awe-inspiring things that Nathan has been able to create. And you come here and you get to try your hand at it. Mm -hmm. And I think some of my favorite things is when people create something, they come and they tell me about it, and they say, well, I saw something that Nathan did, and I really wanted to try it out. I wanted to see if I could create something like he did. Um, it's just really great. It's great to see what people come up with. Mm -hmm. And there are some cool builds over here. You want to point out a few of your favorites or some of the neat ones that you, you've seen people build over here? I mean, I think that this duck right here is one of my favorites. I keep saving it day to day to day <laughs> um, because how cute is that? And they've used some really creative bricks in a way to create something that's very lifelike and um, organic out of really basic bricks. You got to love Pac-Man down there because, right, who exactly. doesn't? <laughs> it's classic. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I think uh, up on the top shelf over here, we keep saving it also, is this dinosaur. Um, and I think that my favorite thing about this dinosaur is when someone created it, it was just the dinosaur. There was nothing else around it. And we actually noticed this little boy came up and he took the dinosaur off the shelves. And as a staff, we were kind of like, oh no, he's gonna ruin the dinosaur, that's our favorite. <laughs> uh, but he didn't, he added a base plate to the bottom and he added fire around it. And he added these environmentals and then put it back. And I thought that was such a great collaborative, creative experience for someone to kind of add on to something that another visitor had made. Yeah. Very neat. And you got the Titanic got there. The Titanic. That's a cool build with the, the iceberg and everything. It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got to get creative sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Titanic's awesome.